Well, g'day curd nerds. Today, we're gonna to be making jack-in-the-box cheese. So just when you thought I was running out of ideas for cheese, people keep sending me suggestions on cheeses they've tried or um, have recommended. So this one was suggested to me by uh, Cheryl from Florida. And uh, Cheryl uh, came up with this idea of a jack-in-the-box cheese where you put a, a cheese inside a cheese. Now I'm pretty sure it's been done before, but not to this type well, definitely not to this scale anyway. So, what I have here is a, a white cheddar with a, an orange Monterey Jack, or pe sorry, Pepper Jack um, cheese on the inside. And it's very hard to tell because I, got, I made a little, well, and you'll see as we go along in the video, I've made a little lid, kind of. Uh, well, best I can anyway. And inside is a peppery cheese. So, very cool. So, a cheese inside a cheese. So, anyway, this is the first for the channel. Um, I hope you will join me in watching how I make Jack in the Box cheese. Firstly, a big thank you to Inglenook Dairy for providing the milk for this video. So, as always, don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment. I'm boiling all the stainless steel stuff there. The jack-in-the-box ingredients are 10 litres or 2.5 gallons of whole cow's milk divided into two batches, one 6 litre or 1.5 gallon and one 4 litre or 1 gallon batches. One sixteenth of a teaspoon of MA4001 mesophilic culture for each batch. A quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water for each batch. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of single strength rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water for each batch. 12 drops or 0.6 millilitres of anato and two teaspoons of chili flakes for the four litre batch and some cheese salt. So start by heating your milk to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then add some anato to the four litre or one gallon batch. You can see the six litre batch is at the front and the four litre batch is to the rear of the shot. That's what it looks like when the anato has been added to the four litre batch. A nice difference in colour. Then we're going to add the starter culture. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk in both pots. Then allow the cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. So once they are rehydrated, we're going to stir the cultures into the milk. Just a top and bottom motion. So it's one pot and there's the next. So we're going to allow the milk now to ripen for 40 minutes or acidify for 40 minutes. So whilst you're waiting, just add the chili flakes to quarter of a cup of water, boil them and then simmer for 10 minutes. And then you'll get a nice chili liquid with the rehydrated chili flakes. So after that 40 minutes has elapsed, we're going to drain the chili water into the four litre batch only. Leaving the chili flakes behind. So we're going to retain those for later use in the curds to make the pepper jack. Give that a good stir through the four litre batch of milk. Pop the thermometers back into the pots. Now add the calcium chloride to each pot. Give that a good stir. And same again for the six litre batch. Now 
Now we're going to add the rennet solution. Give that a good stir for no more than one minute. A little bit of chili there, sneaking into the white one, so I got rid of that. Now add the rennet to the second batch. Give that a good stir, no more than one minute. And the total curd set time for both the batches is 40 minutes. So after 40 minutes, we're going to check for a clean break. Yeah, that looks good. And the second one, yeah, that looks good as well. Cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. I used a curd harp to do the horizontals and then a curd knife to do the verticals. And do that the same for both batches. Pop the lids on and allow the curds to heal for five minutes. After the five minutes is up, just gently separate the curds with a spoon. Any large ones, just break them up with the edge of the spoon. And then slowly increase the temperature to 38 degrees Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit while stirring for 40 minutes. So you can just alternate between each pot if you wish. No big deal if the other one's not being stirred, as you can see there. And that's the curd size at the end of the 40 minutes. About the size of a navy bean or baked bean. So allow the curds to rest for 40 minutes. While we're maintaining the target temperature all the time. Which is now at 38 Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to drain off some of the whey. I'm just getting prepared there with a cup and a sieve that's been sanitized. So dip off the whey to the level of the curds and do that for both batches. Now you can retain the whey if you wish. It's undiluted and you can use it in anything you want. Just check the temperature and it was spot on. Now we're going to stir the curds for 20 minutes. This helps release a little bit more whey. Now if you get fancy, you can have two spoons and stir at the same time. But after the 40 minutes, pop the lids back on and we're going to allow the curds to rest for five minutes to make it easier to drain. So over to the sink area, we're going to transfer the curds for the, the white curds into a cheesecloth lined colander. And just allow those to drain for five minutes. Once they're drained, pop them back into the pot again. There we go. Squeeze your cheesecloth out and line the colander again for the next batch. Pop the lid on. So then transfer the yellow curds into the cheesecloth lined colander. And allow those to drain for five minutes. So five minutes later, transfer the drained curds back into the pot. 
We're still keeping the batches separate at the moment because we're treating them differently. Just break the curds up with your hand. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of salt to the yellow curds, which is the four litre batch. And then we're going to add the chili. Get all the chili flakes out. and then mix well with your hand. Clean hands, of course. So once all that's mixed up, just set that aside. Get the white curds, wash your hands, of course, and then break up those, give it a quick drain, and then break those curds up with your hands as well. Right, so we're gonna add the salt to this now. So we want three and a half teaspoons or one tablespoon and half a teaspoon to the white curds, the six litre batch. There we go, and then mill that in. With your clean hands, of course. So add a thin layer of the white curds to a cheesecloth lined basket. So it's only about a centimetre thick, and then just pat that down. And then take a camembert basket and place that in the centre of the large basket. This is going to help us form a well for the other curds. And then pack them in firmly, leaving a little bit left for a lid for the top of the cheese. So pack them in as firmly as you can with your fingers. and then give the camembert basket a little bit of a twist and gently remove it to reveal a well in the center. Now, if any curds fall in, that's okay. Just grab the loose curds and pack them back up on the sides of the basket. So we have a little well now and we're going to now put the yellow curds with the chili into the center until they're all used. Now, you'll fill the well and then some, but I press down with the camembert basket to help get them all in there. You'll see it'll overflow out of the well, that's fine. We're gonna make a little, a little reveal. And then we're gonna add the rest of the white curds onto the top. So that's what we're doing now. We're just gonna add the rest of those white curds just to form a lid for the jack-in-the-box cheese. So there should be no curds remaining now. So fold over the cheese cloth and then top that with a follower for your basket. And then we're going to apply 10 kilograms or 22 pounds of pressure for one hour. I'm just using my spring press there. That means I close the spring about halfway. It's a guesstimate. Just make sure it's centered so you don't get a wonky cheese. There we go, lovely. And we're going to press that for one hour. So after an hour, we're going to remove the cheese from the basket and have a look at uh, what it looks like. It's very exciting. So do this very gently because the curds have not knitted to form a solid rind yet. This is just the initial press. Just gently turn that over. Okay, they just flip that over and then redress the cheese. I'm just looking for any imperfections. It looks pretty good. A little bit wonky, but we're going to fix that in a second. So now we're going to apply 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds of pressure 
for 12 hours or overnight. Don't lose any sleep over the cheese, of course. So with my spring press, it's the spring fully compressed. Now as the cheese shrinks, you may need to tighten the spring again. This is just normal. So the next day for me, I've got a clean uh, mat there, plastic mat. Just washing my hands with uh, white vinegar to make sure there's no mold on them after I've washed my hands under the tap. Remove the cheese from the basket. And take it out of the cloth. Now it should be fully consolidated. There's no extra pressing required for this. You see there's a little line there of yellow which is a bit of a reveal. So we're going to air dry at room temperature until touch dry. Mine took about two days and turn it twice daily. So I like the little uh, orange or yellow spots and the line there. Looks pretty cute. What I like is it teases that there's something different about this cheese. So once it's air dry, we can wax or vacuum pack the cheese, as you can see there. Don't forget to write on the, uh, the packet or, or the wax. So write when it's ready. So we're going to ripen at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for three months. Don't forget to turn the cheese weekly. Anyway, back to Gav. So there you have it, curd nerds. That was Jack in the Box cheese. I hope the chili is peppery enough uh, for my liking. Uh, and I hope it doesn't uh, acidify out too much, uh, like ex get it crumbly. Um, I know it's salted enough, which is good. Um, I think the flavour will be exceptional. And when I cut into it, into the... You know, cut it in half this way. Uh, I think it's going to be very visually appealing. It'll kind of look like an upside down top hat, I would think. Um, but yeah, it, so a white cheese on the outside and you can see hints of it. The orange cheese on the inside. So the pepper jack. Um, yeah, anyway, not much more to say about that. It was a bit complicated because I had to use two pots to make a white cheese and an orange coloured cheese. Um, but the good thing was the recipe was the same, basically farmhouse cheddar um, with the addition of the annatto for the inside of the cheese and the, uh, the chili pepper flakes for the, the, the orange inside cheese as well. Anyway, we'll see what happens in the taste test. Uh, it's ready 11th of April uh, 2023, so if you haven't already subscribed then please do so because then when I post the taste test you'll get notified. Um, on how the cheese tastes. I'm expecting a winner, but who knows in the world of cheese making, especially when you make it up as you go along. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.